Hi, this is Tim Martin, and in this astronomy video, I want to give you an introduction to the Jovian planets. Jovian, or Jupiter-like planets, are sometimes referred to as the outer planets. You may also hear them being referred to as the gas giant planets, although Jupiter and Saturn truly are gas giants, Uranus and Neptune are really more ice giant planets. Let's dive in and take a look at each. If you ever have the chance to see Jupiter through a telescope, I highly recommend it, one of my favorite objects. Here's Jupiter through a moderate-sized telescope at the Klein Observatory. When NASA was able to fly by Jupiter with spacecraft, we got much clearer views. Let's look for some of the details about Jupiter. Jupiter orbits the Sun at a distance of 5.2 AU. That's 5.2 times further than the Earth is from the Sun. It takes 11.8 years for Jupiter to make one trip around the Sun. Although it's the biggest of the planets, it has the fastest rotation. One day on Jupiter is merely 9 hours and 50 minutes. At 11.2 times the diameter of the Earth, if you hollowed Jupiter out, more than a thousand Earths would fit inside. Besides its large size, it's incredibly heavy at over 300 times heavier than planet Earth. In fact, Jupiter is so big that if you totaled up all of the rest of the planets, moons, asteroids, and comets, Jupiter weighs more than all of the rest of the solar system. This large mass coupled with its size gives Jupiter a density of approximately 1.4 grams per cubic centimeter. As we look at Jupiter, you'll notice white and dark areas. The light areas are known as zones, while the dark areas are known as belts. In these cloud systems, we can see incredibly strong winds through Jupiter's atmosphere, which is mostly made out of hydrogen and helium with small amounts of ammonia and other chemicals. Because of the strong winds, we know that Jupiter has more internal heat than heat that just is received from the Sun. Temperatures inside Jupiter may be well into the tens of thousands of degrees. With these extreme temperatures, Jupiter's hydrogen acts as a strong conductive metal, giving rise to Jupiter's strong magnetic field. On to Saturn. Again, Saturn viewed through a moderate-sized telescope is really a sight to behold. I hope you get a chance to see Saturn sometime. Of course, closer up, when NASA sent the Cassini spacecraft out to Saturn, we had incredible views. At a distance of more than 9.5 AU, or 9.5 times the Earth-Sun distance, it takes Saturn 29.5 years to make one complete orbit of the Sun. Like Jupiter, it's also a fast rotating planet. One day on Saturn is 10 hours and 13 minutes. Its diameter is 9.5 times the diameter of Earth, and it's 95 times heavier than Earth. Quite a bit lighter than the planet Jupiter, its density is so low that it's less than that of water. If you could find a place big enough, Saturn would actually float. Like Jupiter, Saturn is composed mostly of hydrogen and helium, with small amounts of ammonia and methane and a few other gases. On to Uranus. Not much to look at in a telescope, also not much to look at when the NASA spacecraft flew past. We do see a distinctly bluish-green color, and that's due to the quantities of methane in the atmosphere. Uranus orbits the Sun at 19.2 astronomical units, and it takes 84 years to make a trip around the Sun. Relatively fast in its rotation, it rotates once in 17 hours and 56 minutes. Its diameter is four times larger than Earth, with a mass 14 and a half times that of Earth, giving it a density of approximately 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter. One of the truly unique things about Uranus is its rotation. Uranus's axis has been tilted quite strongly, greater than 90 degrees, so rather than spinning like a top, it appears to roll as it makes its path around the Sun. Not only is the rotational axis tilted, Uranus' magnetic field is also tilted at over 60 degrees. On to the outermost of the planets, we find Neptune. Like Uranus, with a composition of hydrogen and helium with a significant amount of methane, the methane scattering away the red light from the sun, it reflects mostly blue light. Neptune orbits the sun at a distance of 30.1 astronomical units. It takes over 164 years for Neptune to make one trip around the Sun, but its rotation is only a little more than 16 hours. Slightly smaller than Uranus, it has a diameter 3.8 times that of the Earth. 
but it's heavier than its twin at 17.5 times the mass of the Earth, giving Neptune a density of 1.6 grams per cubic centimeter. Like the other planets, Neptune has an internal heat source where it generates more heat than it receives from the Sun. This is responsible for extreme winds on the planet Neptune, with some of the winds being measured at over 1,200 kilometers an hour. Let's look at some of the characteristics of these planets altogether. Because of the spacecraft that have flown by, we do have a hint as to their internal structure. Both Jupiter and Saturn are composed almost exclusively of hydrogen and helium. They have a thick atmosphere of hydrogen and helium gas, and below that is a layer of liquid metallic hydrogen and helium. As mentioned earlier, this is likely what gives rise to their strong magnetic fields. Down in their center, they also likely have a rocky core. The ice giants, Uranus and Neptune, are slightly different. They do have thick atmospheres, mostly of hydrogen and helium, with a significant amount of methane. Below the atmosphere is a layer that varies from solid to liquid of water, ammonia, and methane. They too likely have a small rocky core. What are some other characteristics of these four planets? Well, as we look at Jupiter, one of the obvious things is the Great Red Spot. This storm has been active for over 300 years basically as long as we've been observing Jupiter through telescopes. This incredible anticyclonic storm at times has been more than twice the diameter of planet Earth, although in the last several years it appears to have been shrinking. Neptune also has a large storm. It was named the Great Dark Spot, but now that we've studied Uranus in infrared light, we can see it too has cloud features and occasionally has significant storms. A few years ago, there was a massive storm system on the planet Saturn, reaching the entire way around the planet. Not only are there large storms, there's also smaller storms. Thunderstorms are quite common on the planet Jupiter. Some of the spacecraft that have flown by have recorded lightning strikes on the nighttime side of Jupiter. Possibly one of the most interesting storms in the solar system, the hexagonal storm that dominates Saturn's north pole. Before you think, that the geometric storm on the north pole of Saturn is strange, it's worth noting these images that have been recently taken from the Juno spacecraft orbiting Jupiter. We can see in the top image the north pole of Jupiter has a distinctive pattern of eight storms that form a square or possibly an octagon around the north pole. Then in the lower image on the south pole we can see six storms that form a very distinct pentagon with one storm in the center. We also know that Jupiter, Saturn, and at least Uranus have strong auroras, northern and southern lights. Charged particles in the solar wind interact with the strong magnetic fields of these planets, causing chemicals in the upper atmosphere to glow. You'll notice that Uranus's aurora is not near the poles. Well, that's because the magnetic field is tilted away from the rotational pole of the planet. It's likely also that Neptune has auroras, we just haven't had the opportunity to photograph them yet. Another distinctive feature of all of these outer planets are rings. Of course, Saturn's rings are the most beautiful, but we've also discovered rings on the other planets as well. Jupiter's rings weren't discovered until we sent a spacecraft that actually went past Jupiter when Jupiter was backlit by the Sun, we were able to see its very thin ring. Uranus's ring was discovered when it was passing in front of a background star. Astronomers hoped to see light from the star pass through Uranus's atmosphere. Prior to eclipsing the background star, the star flickered, and that led us to discover Uranus's rings. Neptune also has rings. These rings were discovered when the Voyager spacecraft flew past and looked back towards the center of the solar system. When the planet was backlit, we were able to see a few of its small rings. So what are the rings composed of? The rings are made out of mostly water ice with some bits of rock. At first, Saturn was thought to have about three rings, but on closer inspection, we realized that there were many, many, many rings. In fact, Saturn has billions and billions of small ring particles that are orbiting the planet. Another unique feature of Saturn's rings are its shepherd moons. Many of the smaller ring particles are kept in line by small moons. In the picture on the right, we can see some of these ring particles affected by this small moon and its gravitational attraction causing waves in the other rings. It's worth noting that the rings of all the planets orbit directly above the equator. 
Since the planets tilt on their axis, sometimes we can see more and sometimes we can see less of the rings. Saturn's rings, although they may be over 200,000 kilometers across, are only a few 10 meters thick. So when Saturn reaches its equinox, or the Sun appears directly over the equator, the rings almost disappear. The rings also must play a really unique role in the weather. Consider how much the shadow of the rings would affect the light received from the Sun, and how this might change the weather on the planet. Rings truly are spectacular features of all of the outer planets, and in this backlit view of Saturn, we can see Saturn and its rings in all of their grandeur. One final comment on the outer planets. They all are entire systems with many moons. The most recent count, as this video is being made in 2019, is that Jupiter has 79 moons. Saturn has 62. Uranus with 27, Neptune with 14. It's likely that more will be discovered in the years and decades to come. I'll make another video highlighting some of the really unique features of some of the moons of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Thanks for watching, and I hope you join me again on another Earth Science video.